Hello. Welcome to our series of interviews with the Iyengar Yoga teachers. I am Bibi and I'm representing the Iyengar Yoga Association in Vancouver. So if you have jumped in just in the beginning of this, you can see this the other interviews as well on this channel. So we are every month we are inviting an Iyengar teacher to, to share with us their journey in the in the yoga, why they joined it and um, why they became teachers. So hopefully that you will feel inspired and uh, you'll have some questions to us, to our teachers. Uh, so, so please put them in the comments below and we will come back to answer them. So today I have invited Krishna and Krishna is a senior level three certified Ayanga yoga teacher living in Kelowna, BC. She's been practicing since 1996 and teaching for 20 years and now uh, uh, years now since 2001. Krishna has been to India many times to study with the Iyengar family and has had a rich life of practice under other international senior teachers. She is active within the Iyengar Yoga Association of Canada as a member and assessor and enjoys teaching classes and workshops online and in person. Welcome, Krishna. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you, Bibi. So let's just dive into, um, I really is excited to hear your story, your journey. So if we go back in time, when you first heard about the word yoga or how you got introduced to, to this practice. Okay, well, I started to hear the word yoga when I was a teenager because I think I was really searching then for the meaning of life, for my purpose on the planet. And when I was a teenager, I started to study Eastern philosophy and this word yoga kept coming up. And they weren't specifically talking about yoga asanas, they were talking about yoga, the path of yoga. And so I had heard that word yoga for some time and then kind of disappeared for a while. Then I had my daughter, my first child, and about one year after that, um, yoga was really gaining in popularity around here. And I kept hearing that word yoga again. Oh yeah, I got to try this thing called yoga, whatever it is. By that point, I knew it had something to do with exercise. And uh, a friend of mine invited me to come to this really interesting woman's place, Margaret Lunum, who had a studio in the basement of her home. And at that time, there weren't these big yoga studios around. People were teaching from home or rec centers. And so I went there and I was quite a physical person as we are in physical bodies. I really enjoyed the physical practice and I had been, you know, I'd played sports and been, um, you know, a long distance runner. And I was like, wow, my legs are really weak. <laughs> I thought I'd be really strong because of all my exercise. So, uh, you know, I started to have these moments of realization in this class and very soon that one class a week became the highlight of my week. It was the one time away from being a mother and in my job, et cetera, that I could really just be myself mm -hmm. and focus on myself. And when I think back to that time, I was, my daughter was about a year old. And uh, for you mothers out there, many of us have like an identity crisis of sorts. When you become a mother, um, you realize that you have this big responsibility now. And I was thinking about how to become a better model for my, ch for my children and that required some, you know, going inward to find that. So because I was a young mother and I was working in a cafe part time, I didn't have a lot of money. And in a way that was a gift because it necessitated that I start a home practice very quickly. 
I saw the benefits of going once a week to that yoga class and I was hooked. I was addicted to that feeling of just being quiet, Mm -hmm. of sharpening my awareness, of being fully in my body, not just in my head. And Mm -hmm. so very quickly I took to a home practice out of necessity. I couldn't afford to go more than once a week. And frankly, people didn't often do that in those days. Um, So, you know, I'd move all the furniture around in my living room so I could do Ardha Chandrasana at the wall and things like that. But that's basically how I got started. Mm -hmm. I think that that will resonate with uh, many people in these days because I find myself that most of the time I'm really overwhelmed with the external noise. You know, if there's uh, so many, I could just open your eyes if you start looking in the social media, even if you would try to avoid that, but your email will be overloaded with the information, with emails, you know, like everything is just, just this, the communicational information noise. And amongst that, to hear what is really right for you, what really will work for you, what really will help you in your unique journey in your life. So you said that you heard that word yoga, but it kind of triggered your attention. So so there's some wisdom behind our intellect that we, if we trust it, if we believe it, it gives us, it shows us, it guides us into the right journey and and your path. And I, I totally like. I don't have my own kids, but I helped my mom to raise four since mama, since I was five years old. And I, I totally understand. See how it's you know it's so easy to uh, to dissolve yourself uh, yeah, by uh, taking care of a little one. You know, there's a little life that you you hold the full responsibility for this life, and. Um, it, like finding your time for yourself, for your self-love, like most of um, the, my friends, moms who I know, they sometimes feel guilty to, you know, to cra- crave out an hour, like, oh my gosh, 90 minutes for like practice, you do it every day? Well, okay, you don't have kids, they, they say to me. <laughs> it's so important to do that because we are really external. Even if we don't have children, you know, our attention is so much focused outside of ourselves. Mm-hmm. You really need that time. And I think we really crave that time to just be with ourselves, to get to know ourselves on a deeper level. And you touched on something there, um, which is that only in those moments of only when we can really cultivate inward mindedness when we can go inside can we really recognize intuition to know when a when an impulse when a thought when an idea is an intuitive awareness rather than a neurotic um, mind creation yeah that's so important. I think that, you know, so we have now I hear here and there from my friends, businessmen, like, you know, in the new era, like how we adjust, you need to be agile, you need to pivot and you need to go into the new dimension, but, and uh, quite, okay, so how to boost my creativity, like how to be innovative. And they keep looking in uh, answers in outside. And if we give them an, an answer, no, just go inside. Most of us are scared. Like I have so many friends who went for, you know, this 10 days silent vipassan and they quit on the day two or three, just being afraid of being with yourself. Yes. It's hard for people to be with that spaciousness. Mm-hmm. In our society these days, there's so much distraction. There's so much... Um, to captivate our attention out there. There's so much that wants to grasp our attention and take us away from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And yogis really go against the grain because we're saying, okay, I see, I see all that stimuli, but I, I value that inner knowing that inner spaciousness. And -hmm. I will take time to be there with myself and to cultivate that that inner inner quietness and inner stability. Mm-hmm. 
so much wisdom in every word, Krishna. I really just like to listen to to your answers. Let's if then I would like to turn a little bit towards um, again outside from your experience of teaching for so many years. You've seen so many people, different people, different kinds of people. I'm always curious as like, you know, being a researcher by nature and seeing like finding patterns. Is there a certain kind of people that are attracted to yoga and stay, stick to it? And, or it's like really yoga is for everyone. It's just finding your own way of doing it and practicing it. I, I think yoga can be for everyone. And I think that's why there are such a multitude of traditions and styles and lineages, because each one of those um, yoga methodologies can resonate for different types of people. So I find that Iyengar yoga really attracts highly intelligent people the people that i have worked with i'm amazed they're really sharp thinkers they're very curious they want to know why and how and you know i enjoy that about iyengar yoga in particular and mm -hmm. th those people also are are really interested i think generally with yoga people are interested in relationship relationship with themselves relationship with their own bodies really you know enhancing their relationship also with other people and that can only really come when you're fully in relationship with yourself you become available that way to be with others in a in a way that um, really connects with other people. So I, I found I've had wonderful friendships uh, arise out of this practice of Iyengar yoga. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So it's finding relationship, first of all, building relationship with yourself, right? So finding that the, the quiet inner dialogue with your intuition, with that inner wisdom, with that inner voice and also speaking out from that space, from that place with the people around you so that you attract the right people in your, in your universe, in your world, so that you connect and you communicate and you grow together. Yeah, that, that's, a, yeah. that's a very interesting, beautiful experience. Um, I would go with a question of um, consistency because um, you know that uh, like part of our brain, we like to always, we always look for something new, always something that, you know, excites us. Like we do need to, a dose of dopamine in our brain and hormones, like pleasure hormones in our brains. So it always looks are, okay, like achieving, right? And I also myself found some, sometimes, especially when I was getting for ready for assessment, it's like all this, like whatever list of asanas I would practice and practice, but oh my gosh, it's good, boring. I need to <laughs> something different right so like and I started okay let's bring my knowledge from from, from business and I started, started setting KPIs okay can if I do headstand for five minutes can I do it for 10 minutes and you know like getting into this uh, path towards increasing like you know can I do the handstand for two minutes now can I do handstand for five minutes <laughs> so what would be your um you know uh, experience of uh, and advice in terms of how to be consistent, how to grow uh, in your own pace and to find that kind of also, also inner journey. Well, I can only, of course, speak from my own experience, but I would crack open light on yoga all the time. And I'd look at some of these wild poses in the back of the book. I would think, I'm just going to try that. And of course, you know, it was impossible. But I, I would give it a try. And then I would think about, okay, what is missing here? Why can't I go there? So I had really a playful attitude towards it. And I think, and I've spoken to a lot of other practitioners about this, if we 
there, there's a time for seriousness. Absolutely. There's a time to really study, focus, analyze, concentrate. Absolutely. And there's also, um, it's important to be curious and playful and experiment and just try just make an attempt. So for me, that brought in that aspect of novelty, which you speak of. Maybe my teachers weren't teaching those poses because they weren't certified to do that or they couldn't do it. And that's why my home practice also became a gem. Mm. For me, it was really my home practice still feels like a gift because it's unlimited. I can do whatever I want. It's not within a syllabus. So for those who are struggling with consistency, if you find it's getting dull and boring, you have to try something else. You have to ask your teacher. The teachers often have great um, examples of where you can go. I know some people get really mechanical about their practice and they do the same thing over and over and over again. You will still get some benefit from that, but I think that um, most of us want to get out of the box instead of in the box. So uh, ask for advice, ask what your friends are doing. What are they practicing? Because the more consistent you are, of course, the more benefits you'll reap with mm-hmm. that consistency. Yeah, definitely. This is, you know, with the consistency, I all, only after so many years of practicing and practicing just just like um, really religiously, I trusted the Iyengar method that everything starts from yoga mat and from asana practice, not going into some, you know, thinking that I'm touching some higher whatever kundalini thingy that I, I only read in books and enlightenment things, but just go on mat and practice with the precision, with dedication and just practice and practice and practice. And I I do now experience, so like it's not theoretical knowledge, it's experiential knowledge. I experience the difference, like I receive a stimulus and I don't react right away. I have this space to breathe and like my brain, like my my habit of daily yoga changed my brain in terms of how do I respond to the world to the stimuli like you know i really can hold my anger or like, you know even fear and like strong emotions that really can kick us in and we can like, you know just boost in the emotions and this is what i uh, like I, I i'm wondering how we can like, you know find the right language find the right words to to show the benefits, even if you don't have time for 90 minutes practice every day, right? In our crazy busy schedule, but what would be the, like, what would be your advice to people who are thinking maybe about, or never have it, have it in their basket list to, <laughs> to start yoga practice one day? What would be their minimum, like, you know, little habit that they can start implementing and they will see the benefits with that with the time? Oh, so many things, but I think start where you are, know what your starting place is. If I'm an absolute beginner, maybe I won't go to the back of the book right away. Um, I'll start with five minutes. I just say to myself today, I will do five minutes of yoga practice. What will I practice? What did I do in class? this week. Oh, we did Trikonasana. Okay, Trikonasana. And then you find yourself on the mat, you've done Trikonasana, and then you, your body says, Oh, Virabhadrasana too. So you go into Virabhadrasana too, and really learn to go into your body. I think the biggest blockage with yoga practice is this, the Hmm. head, the mind, we can so easily get distracted we can so easily talk ourselves out of it by saying things like i don't know how to do it right i'm probably doing it wrong so i shouldn't do it at all and my experience has been the opposite that you just be playful try a few things you know work with the chair whatever so start 
by making a small carve out a small amount of time. Often people find that if they can say, I'm going to practice yoga for five minutes, 10 minutes, that it will naturally expand on its own. And to go into your practice without great expectations mm -hmm. about where it's going and what you're going to get out of it, because you will constantly be surprised as you've described how yoga brings these things forth the, the yoga asana practice really works on you we think we're working on it but actually it's working on us so to go in with that kind of openness and receptivity mm -hmm. and not to expect perfection i think you know that's one downfall of being a highly intelligent person coming into iyengar yoga we immediately go for that it's got to be a perfect asana you just have to be aware. That's that's the main thing. Awareness without judgment. Mm -hmm. well, that was a lot. That wasn't one piece of advice, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a very practical advice. I would say I would agree with you. Just like you know, in the in the science of psychology, going by changing your behavior, start from a tiny little like atomic habits. They say by nano steps, like you know, start meditation from one breath or start, start yoga practice just by one asana, or I don't know, like one move, like, like again, one breath, like stand in Tadasana for, uh, for one breath uh, in a day. And this is, and then celebrate that you, you did yoga today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and then when you will find joy and connect the, you know, the the, the the joy and experience, then you will do that because, like nowadays, I cannot imagine my body will demand, will tell me that, oh, girl, you need a move, <laughs> you <Yeah>. gotta move, <laughs> right? A little bit more you mindful. said something really lovely there, which is to celebrate. You did five minutes of yoga. Celebrate that. I think. A lot of people really get into it wasn't good enough. They tell themselves that message, I didn't do it well enough. It wasn't good enough. And mm -hmm. like you, I've seen that it's so much better to just pat yourself on the back and say, yes, I did five minutes today. <laughs> because then that builds a, yeah. um, a desire to go back. You, you leave with a good feeling, not with a bad feeling. Yes, definitely. And it's all backed up by the evidence from neuroscience and psychology. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Christian, I, I really, um, I, think, I think I lost the, the track of time, but I wanted to keep it short and sweet. So, and I hope that we will come back in, in this room and we will con continue our conversation, maybe going deeper into the philosophy of yoga, which is I'm very fond of and interested in. And I know that you're a great expert in that. But really, thank you very much for your time today. And uh, again, guys, please uh, hope that you have listened to the end and put your comments in the uh, section below below and we will uh, come back for you with uh, with the answers to your questions thank you bye baby